Welcome. So today we are going to be growing a robot out of a mushroom fungi kit. So if you've ever wanted to build a robot, but you don't have a 3D printer or foam board, and you do have a mushroom growing kit, then this video is for you. The kit I have is from Far West Fungi, and the species is shiitake. I don't know if this is the best, but this supposedly is a pretty easy species to grow, and that means I'm less likely to screw it up. Depending on your kit, you might need some substrate for it to grow on. So you can grab something like hay, blend it with a little water. Uh, but I didn't realize that the kit I have already has like substrate built in. So I threw that away. Yeah. All right, now real first step, you make the mold. For my mold, I'm using PVC. You want something that's got a smooth no. surface. Stop. Quality control, damn it. <laughs> And after that, uh, I just kind of pack it with the kit. Um, you can see there's some mulch or some wood chip stuff that makes up the substrate in this kit. After packing the molds, I put them in a plastic bag for 10 days. One eternity later. After 10 days, you can see the mycelium has grown around all the substrate and it makes it kind of structurally sound, but it's still pretty delicate. I'm able to remove the mold and um, I need some more mycelium growth, which by the way, that, that word's just the body of the mushroom that's usually under the ground, and then the actual mushrooms themselves are the fruit of the mycelium. Anyway, so I'm able to take it out of the mold, put it back in a plastic bag for five more days, and this time I don't seal the bag quite as much so there's a little bit more oxygen flow. It's looking a little bit more robust after the five days, so I take it and I bake it. I obviously don't want a living organism anymore now that it's going to become a robot, so baking it both dries it out so it becomes a little bit lighter weight and then also kills all of the fungi. Sorry, fungi. All right, so we have the final material now, and before I start building a robot out of this, I kind of want to talk about the material because it's different than anything I've really ever seen. So. It's spongy, but not really as compressible as like styrofoam would be because it seems like the outer skin has hardened more than you'd get with styrofoam. So um, like if I press on like this tooth area, you can see it doesn't compress as much as you get with styrofoam. Uh, maybe I can communicate that by banging it. Like, I don't know if this sound gives you any insight as to how rigid, uh, that probably isn't helping. Anyway. A little bit more stiff than styrofoam, a uh, little bit more dense than styrofoam too. Um, although it's going to be similar to styrofoam when it comes to actually building a robot out of this. Uh, and I don't really know how I'm going to attach stuff to it because similar to styrofoam, um, you're going to need to spread the attachment out over a large enough surface area that the chunk that you attach to doesn't just break off. So we'll see how that goes when I glue motors to it. But interesting stuff. Now that I have my chassis, I set up the electronics. I've built so many of these little Crave Monster robots. If you want to see how it's done, I've got some tutorials below for the electronics. But um, it's the same as any other robot. I noticed that tape doesn't really stick well to it, but hot glue actually sticks really well, uh, similar to how hot glue would stick to wood. One thing to note, don't ever hot glue lithium ion batteries. They are explodey. After adding the mouth and fixing some brownout issues due to the servos drawing too much current, it is all done. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, share it or check out my PC build or the robot I made that draws out custom pancakes. Have a great day. No. Gotta get a good thumbnail picture. Yeah, like that. Here we go.